Oh. Hey, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Real Housewives of New Jersey recap. Season 13, episode 9, with myself, Russell Ray, and my co-host with the most, Ronnie Jr. What is up? I'm feeling it. Feeling the episode. Um, How's it going, yeah. man? Tell me you about, know, I know you had a little thing, a little couple things going on with Jonesy in the morning. and Oh, yes, 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 tea. yes, yes. I love radio. And so um, I would be like a friend of, <laughs> in regards of Housewives. Okay, For okay. Uh, 94.7 The Block, there is, uh, in New York City, uh, there's a show called uh, Miss Jones, Jonesy in the Morning. So she's back in action. And every once in a while, the friend of me will uh, show up. So it's been a lot of fun. Thank you. I love it, Russell. I wake up early. That's why I look disheveled right now. <laughs> well, you know, for anybody who hasn't seen it or heard it, uh, Ronnie is a great co-host. Not only like Aww. on my on our podcast here, but when I also co-host with him on his on his channel. Now we're streaming on everybody's channels. Um, he actually... I have a snippet of Jonesy in the morning. I want everybody to check it out before we actually get into Housewives in New Jersey. Here we go. You where everyone is. Jonesy in the morning on 94.7 The Block. Hey, boo, hey, good morning. What's up, Jonesy? How you doing? Randomly, ladies and gentlemen. Did I tell you that I have a new best friend? You did not? Actually, I think we're dating. Oh. Um, yeah, yeah. Wayne, listen to this. Don't be jealous, Wayne. <laughs> I think this is a hot off the presses. Um, it turns out that Randomly is now seeing Gail King. What? Do you what? what? <laughs> Does Oprah know about this? Yeah! Well, oh. yeah. technically, we are not dating yet. And, well, technically, she doesn't know me. But let me tell you, this rumored and alleged $12 million contract she's about to sign just tells me she's all the friend that I want. Oh, wow. Okay. Nice, Gail. Congratulations. But you, too, must still salute the cut, Gail. <laughs> yeah. So for oh. anybody who doesn't know, that's Ronnie Jr. with uh, he co-hosts on, with Joni, Jonesy in the morning in New York City. He spotlights. He does his uh, entertainment reporting. And speaking of entertainment reporting, we actually have a special guest host to share with you today, Hollywood Leon. Hey, Leon, welcome to the show. Hi, hi! Thank you for having me. What an intro! That's amazing. Oh. <laughs> and congrats, He's right. Ronnie. He's right. The music we, and everything it was so dramatic. I felt like I was like literally waiting in the wings. <laughs> hey, we get it in on this. Uh, all of our YouTube channels. I'm really proud of all of us. Um, we give honest opinions. It's not easy, especially with Real Housewives of New Jersey. Um, so much going on on Twitter and all these things. I typically don't pay attention to all that. My claim to fame in terms of this is what we see on the show and a lot of the fun. And also, I must admit, last week as a surprise and maybe again today, Russell Ray had a game. I mean, it was giving like it wasn't even giving Andy Cohen. It was giving better than Andy Cohen, which was <laughs> honestly a good thing. Look, all we need is Andy for me to reach out to reach out to me one time. Like, hey, Russ, I'm not feeling so good. I got the Rona. I just need <laughs> right. you to come over for a minute. <laughs> not you wishing him the Rona. <laughs> I'm not wishing him the Rona, but everybody's getting it nowadays. You know what I mean? Like, and like it's only <sighs> taking I'm people out for like two days at a time. It's not we're not doing the longevity of like how I went down the first time. That was two weeks of pure mm. hell but anyways mm. i want to get right into it real quick right off the top ronnie what are your or let's start with hollywood leon hollywood leon just in case um y'all are just joining us hollywood leon has covered everything from real housewives of beverly hills orange county he has the terrible podcast that goes on weekly um he covers all the pop culture he was covering bravo news daily at after Buzz tv like he this man he's on mm -hmm. uh camping uh hbo's camping with Jennifer Gardner, I mean, like, you have done it all. So I want to get your initial response to episode nine of The Real Housewives of New Jersey. Like, what is your thoughts on this episode and how it all, how everything played out thus far? Well, I was actually happy that it was mostly about Dolores. So I think she deserves this new boyfriend, this new life, this new love. And what an amazing house. I was like, Jesus Christ. It mm -hmm. was given 50 shades Look, of gray. It was. I like that. You know what I mean? So I was like, I don't see nothing wrong with a little 50 <laughs> and a little gray. So um, I thought it was good. I like Polly. The wine vault was giving me a little Lenny from Royal Housewives of Miami. Oh. But I was still going for it. Like, doesn't mean like a wine Ouch. vault is bad. Um, but it just it just reminded me. But. What an interesting episode. Yes. We love it, a psychic on Housewives. We love a psychic. It was giving me, uh, I can't even remember the professor's names from uh, from Harry Potter, 
where they did the oracles and they were looking in the cup. It was uh, Harry Potter and the uh, <laughs> oh, wow. Prince, I think it was. I'm so sorry. <laughs> she did for the white people. Anyways, also, like, we don't really like Benton Voldemort from the Real Housewives of Miami, so we just oh. renamed him Voldemort because we don't like to give him any press. Yeah, Lisa's ex, we'll call Lisa's, him. Leave Lisa's, it there. Yeah. Lisa's uh, Tuesday garbage that hasn't mm-hmm, been taken out and mm-hmm. forgot to be taken that, out. That's right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Ronnie, what's your initial thoughts on episode nine? Um, I really do. Um, you know, it's the same. It's, you know, Dolores is our superstar of the show. Everyone makes such a big deal. Is it team Teresa? Is it team Melissa? But like Dolores is such an integral part of the show. And, you know, we get excited this season because there is a little bit of her putting the foot down and saying, no, this is what Polly requests and wants out of a relationship. Frank, you can't be all up in the mix with me. Um, and I feel like it's good to see that. Um, so I guess I'm very much in the same thought process as Leon, which is I want to see Dolores celebrated. And it was also very interesting on Watch What Happens Live. She did mention, although she already looks perfect in every way, as do all these so ladies. Good. She did admit to, and sometimes just admitting it makes you feel good. She mm-hmm. admitted to being on the Ozempic. <laughs> so Pass me some, please. Pass, look, and pass the here's, Ozempic. Here's the reason why. Uh, Jackie, Jackie had come out and she gave an interview to Access Hollywood or uh, Entertainment Tonight, and she mentioned that some of her castmates were on um, that drug, and she didn't necessarily mention who. So I think at one point or another it was going to come to light. So Dolores had to address it before it came out in a negative light. And like yeah. they say in PR, get ahead of it, and you'll be right. fine. Yeah, I'm not saying if it's a good or a bad thing. Um, yeah. Like, do what you got to do. Do what you want to do. However, the the idea of like, no, it's just, you know, I've been doing more lunges or whatever the case. Like, there was a, like, again, I'm not celebrating that she's like this much more skinny than she was before. She was beautiful yeah. before. But I'm more celebrating like, yeah, it's what it is. You know, I'm in the public eye. Yeah, I got public surgery. Uh, public surgery. Oh. I got plastic surgery. Oh, what, <laughs> we, what's happening here? We oh, are there we go. <laughs> We are moving all around. <laughs> we're moving the pieces just like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Look, anything can happen when we're live. This is why we don't. This is why we don't shoot and then and then edit and then go live. Because this is funny when you <laughs> yeah, go live. It is. But speaking it is. of watch what happens live, I have some cheese, man. Well, it's not really cheese, man. That happened this past week with someone coming after Melissa Gorga. Are you ready for this? Other oh, than me, because I always come after her. <laughs> Oh, do you? Oh, no, we love Melissa Gorga. It's, you know, I got to tell you, can, let me just make a, a comment. Quickly. I am giving the judgment based on Melissa Gorga, based on what we see on the television. I know other people are all over the place on all these odd social media platforms. I'm saying she seems like a fun girl. I'm going to leave it at that. So whatever is said elsewhere is said elsewhere. Um, but me personally, I like her. Leon, you don't like her at all? No, I like Melissa. Oh, <laughs> I'm, I'm just not crazy about Melissa like everyone else. Is. Okay, well, let's hear what the cheese man is. I'm and then crazy about it. I don't think I'm crazy about any house. Minus Dolores. I'm crazy about Dolores because I actually have genuinely liked her since her first episode. Anyways, let's get into this because I was like, this seems a little convenient. Here we go. Melissa. Really? Oh, she bought them. She bought them. Oh, she bought them. She you bought think? Them. Who has more followers? <laughs> so, Andy, she was on Watch What Happens Live. And Andy called Alexia. Like, who has more followers. And Alexia, init- she guessed Teresa. And mind you, her and Teresa were just in New York to- uh, together less than a month ago. So I think it's convenient that now she's coming after Melissa saying, oh, she bought them. She bought them. She probably did. Which, I mean, am I entirely against for like these celebrity people who are trying to grow their name? Everyone buys them, though. Like, like Rihanna like, bought them. Okay. Like a bunch of people came out. Remember when they took them away initially, like yes. years ago? Yes. That's how we found out a bunch of people had bought their followers because, like, Rihanna lost like a million people. Uh, Kendall and Kylie lost a couple million. So even though they have millions, they like they add on a couple, thinking yeah. that we won't notice. And I'm like, you know, there's only like really ten housewives that are super famous. And Melissa Gorga is not in that 2.7 million. She, she should be, though. She should be I an icon, know. a queen, a goddess. We love. She's I say the it all goddess the of the Jersey Shore, baby. No, There's a oh, difference. no. See, that's, that's what's interesting. <laughs> Melissa, in my opinion, you know, we don't know what will be the fate or whatever, but like to me, she's just such a badass. Regard- this show, if anything, like, 
it's fine. You know, I would love her to come back for sure. If she doesn't, I'm still rocking out with Melissa Gorga heavy all day, every day. So I it's like not... her evolution. Like she's had a good yeah. evolution and stuff. All I'm but... saying is this show doesn't make or break. Like it's not the end of the world. You know, for some people Absolutely. it is. For some people it is. There, especially in this day and age where there's all kinds of other things you could be doing. Um, I re- I personally really enjoy her podcast. And I'm not going to make this a whole episode about me defending Melissa as usual. Lots of people don't like her. Good. Good for Veronica you. defends Melissa Gorka. <laughs> no. Episode nine. No, I should, I should, I should shut my mouth. Right. <laughs> she just is always to me. Like there's he keeps it going. <laughs> two people. There's the people that are just the people. And then there's always someone that's trying and to me, it's, it's always Melissa trying. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, maybe Teresa had incredible luck flipping the table, becoming super famous, and, like, just becoming a part of pop culture icon, you know, or pop culture history. And, like, I feel like Teresa's always been, like, tap dancing on the side. Like, look at me. Look at me. You know, it goes back you to... You feel like, like who? Her, Melissa. Melissa's always been, like, a little tap dancer on the side trying to get, you oh. know, like, look at me. And I'm like, hmm. I know, like, from the song... And like Joe building the studio. And I remember like he was in the bed and she was singing in the closet. And he's like, shh, your mom is singing. And I'm like, this is so set up. Just just Wait stop, Melissa. But at the same time, when she was doing music, she was doing music with Johnny Wright. That's no name to just like, you know, laugh. Because of Housewives. It, but it doesn't. But to but, be fair. Yeah. To be fair, if I was on Housewives and I had the status of having this platform and people following me, I would have released the best of the best songs that i could have found oh, and do you i think me? on display was the best song i don't think on display was the best song there's plenty of artists out there who are not vocalists who have amazing songs no do it yeah for Britney sure Spears i agree i agree i totally agree with that like <laughs> so release I mean? the like, music release the book do yes, everything you can but do i'm it not not in that best I'm just saying there's always two kinds of people in the world like britney spears says the ones that entertain and the ones that are trying mm. and the best part is we all have different opinions like some people grew up with like britney spears as their queen i personally never liked her never not once i didn't I dislike her but i didn't really care she... j-lo was a queen for me janet jackson was a queen for me diana ross was a queen for me britney i didn't even like 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 uh, there's there was nothing that moved me in that way no diss to her but that's my point is people get a little too excited about these shows about like who is it this one or is it this one like who you like, and I'm going to like who I like. I'm They're actually okay. really excited of the people who do love Teresa, like Alexia. Like, that's great. And if she is in this moment of love, like, I kind of can really be excited for her because it's like she went through so much within this show and to sort of come out on the other side. Now, this will be, will this be a long-term thing with Louie? I don't know. Mm-hmm. Question, 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 question mark. But at the same time, it's <laughs> happening now. <laughs> three and she's happy and it is sort of fun to see it's it's it, like much like what leon said about melissa's evolution or, or growing Teresa has grown into this new person and all of her girls are grow, you know growing older it's kind of a fun time for Teresa, even if you're not like a huge Teresa fan and and a lot of people i'll give credibility to where it's at did kind of say that because she had covid on this particular episode that was recorded um they uh they missed Teresa on the show so you know, kudos to them all. Reality TV is difficult, so I'm, I'm giving flowers all around. And without further ado, because <laughs> <laughs> that was enough on that subject, um, this will be our word of the day. So if you're watching at home and you want something to drink, or actually, Lynn, can you do the little the little Vanna White? Yes, please. If you hear the word Joe, take a drink of your uh, of your cocky. If you are over 21, <laughs> if you're not over 21, just go ahead and take a drink of your LaCroix because, you know, just stay sober, make good choices. Don't do like us and be mm. in, in a midlife crisis having alcohol in the air. <laughs> After, drink it in the morning and the afternoon, and just like Marisol. Yes. With that, with that being said, we're going right into Dolores and Polly's conversation. Um, what did you all think of here? Hold on. Let me get you all side by side so I can get your opinions. Cool. Awesome. So what did you think about <laughs> the conversation between Dolores and, and Polly and, and Polly kind of initiating, I'm not going to stand here for Frank being besties. It's not what I'm about. It's not, you need to take a stance. You need to have that conversation with him and you need to let him know where he stands. Well, how do you feel about that? Leon? Uh, Leon. Um, I liked it. I don't particularly like old school values. Mm-hmm. 
But when it works for some people, like, you know, God bless, you know, Dolores is that kind of person that grew up old school. So she is going to, you know, live her life with those old school values. So it just lines up perfectly with what she believes in. And so I like it. I, I'm, I'm over Frank. Like I'm over this whole like Frank bitching all season. Like it seems very fake to me too. Like you have a girlfriend. We don't want to hear about how Dolores doesn't text me. Like it's kind of, it's kind of giving desperate desperado <laughs> for a storyline. Get out of here. Go to the gym. Instead of a uh, real housewives giving desperate housewives. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm just like, we don't need this. I'm glad that Polly is like puffing up the chest, so to speak. Yeah. And like, you know, this is my woman and, and you belong to me and I just want to spend some time with you and it's about us and it's not about Frank. Yeah, that's how it should be. Especially like with those like New Jersey old school values. Like we have to like very old school. Yeah, we have to like put ourselves in that perspective. Like we live in California. I'm gay. I, I don't have that kind of mentality, but I can appreciate what I'm watching and I have seen New Jersey for a long time. I feel like I know Dolores. That is her type of man, relationship, and yeah. point of view. And she finally has it, so we should be happy for her. And Frank really needs to stop. It's reaching at this point. The crying at the baseball game, like he was trying to have a scene. And she's like, dude, we're at a charity, charity event. <laughs> like, what is wrong with you? Like, yeah. it's it's a little too much. It's probably the being boys. Poured, it's probably being poured on. Um and yeah, he might be a little bit in a mode where he's like, what can I do to keep me on the show or, you know, sneak Britney in there, you know, his girlfriend. Um, the fact of the matter is, even if it went good those first couple of years, that's that's not, you know, forever. And, you know, I think I mentioned on this show a bit ago that what it does is it allows Dolores to date unavailable men. So like, I liked David. I felt like David was great for Dolores, but he was unavailable. You know what I mean? And Frank being that missing link allowed for that so now that she's with Polly and he is kind of more like I want you know a little bit more of you I don't think you should really be texting with him etc cetera, etc cetera. it does feel more real and it just makes all of us as viewers say yes we want Dolores to have this win because she's just really the most straight up um she's the most honest she's um insanely vulnerable on the show and we've watched her for years and years and years and it's kind of making you say why can't she have a happy ending and that's sort of what we're seeing and i I'm, I'm definitely here for it yeah do you think that do you think that Polly and frank will ever get to that that point in their relationship where they can be good friends or do you think that Polly is always just going to push that away i think they can i think what needs to happen is what Polly's doing is he has to put his foot down he's like this is where we're at now mm -hmm. it's kind of like you have to teach people to treat you Mm -hmm. um, teach people how to treat you. And that's what Polly is doing. He's, he's, he, he didn't wait six months, eight months, a year, and then say, you know, I really don't like Frank around. He said, if we're going to be together <laughs> and we're going to live this life together, Frank is not going to be a part of that. Will yeah. Frank come in later? I think Polly does have a stand-up character that that will happen. Just not right now. Yeah. See, here's the thing. I actually, I like Frank. And I really think that he would be a good asset to the show, or to the show if they bring on Brittany and she can not necessarily be, oh my goodness, I forgot to put my phone on, do not disturb, decline, sorry about that. <laughs> There's all kinds of camera <laughs> angles going on, phones, Look, we're trying to be, we're trying to be, we're trying to be production, executive <laughs> production values, right? We're giving Anyways, you a li li like, live show. <laughs> I like Frank and I really, I like what he's about. I do think he's reaching when it comes to his claim to fame because I think he feels it might be running out. I don't think it's going anywhere. If he just sit back, relax, have Brittany engage more with the group. He engages with Brittany more in the group because I think as a couple, like even though there is a significant age gap between them, I think there's a lot of fun there to be had. And I think Brittany can bring this, this fun element of like, Oh, Frank's plus one, because I would feel bad if Frank is detached from the men's group because they all have established this great relationship. But I do understand where Polly's coming from, where it's like, why are you best friends? Because I have my mom is like that. Why are you best friends? Why are you trying to be all up in, why are you, my mom will call it, why are you all up on my jock? <laughs> <laughs> and it's just not, it's not what you would normally do. But then again, like what I mentioned before, like in the first few weeks, 
if you have a functioning family and you can have one big Easter or one big Christmas, it lessens the stress on your kids because they're not running to and fro to really try to make this happen and try to please everyone on these holidays. So I kind of, there's a fine line between I, I love Polly and I love what he's about and I love how he makes Dolores happy. Um, and then there's that line of, well, like he kind of has to make it work because like Dolores said, he has a great relationship with his ex. So why can't Dolores have a great relationship with her ex? And it's like this alpha male toxic mm -hmm. masculinity thing that everybody's talking about in the media today where it's like toxic masculinity, toxic masculinity, eh, you know, <laughs> that is what it is. I'm not even going to get into that, but I do respect the relationship that Dolores and Frank have, but again, Dolores has led that relationship to where it can be functional to the point where it is now. And Frank was a filler for David because David was never <gasps> around. Filler. And now Polly's around, so Ooh. David doesn't need, I mean, Frank doesn't need to be a filler. Oh my God, there's a lot going on in that situation. Fight, fighting words, you called him a filler. Frank the filler. Uh, the thing about Frank is he doesn't <laughs> no, have to be- not <laughs> he doesn't have to be like worried that. if he does have any maybe he wouldn't admit this but if he does have any worry like oh i'm losing the limelight like this was kind of a fun experience he doesn't really have to worry about it like we're in a day and age not like the old days where you do a reality show it's and, and it's over you can he can create a podcast of his own it could be very much the caveman podcast you know he could still have fun and still be part of the media in some way not media but like part of the entertainment uh industry he'll be fine frank will be frank is a big he's a grown-up he will be fine yeah, I don't know why he's worried. It, I think I agree with Russell when he said, like, just kick back. Like, I think it'll be fine. You're not going anywhere. But I don't think we should incorporate his girlfriend. She's too young. He, She's too young, I, I, and sometimes it doesn't work. We've seen it on Orange County. And, like, Chris, even Crystal on Beverly Hills. She's, like, right at that cusp. When they're too young, they just don't blend in with the older I'm women. I'm notoriously very much against the young, so I agree with you on that. And Ronnie's very biased for it. He, he loves an older housewife. We do. That's what it's supposed to be about. Like that's. I what... need like forty nine to like fifty six. I want two time divorcee. <laughs> like I like when you've lived a little. But I agree with you, Leanne. Just a quick question, and sorry, Russell, to jump in here. No, no, you're good. In in a nutshell, can you say so? What do you think about Rachel? Because I agree with you. Usually the younger ones don't work, but I've really been enjoying Rachel Fuda. What is your take on that? Uh, I like Rachel too. I think she's very New Jersey, which I like. Um, I think she is kind of fit in well. I like the newbies. I like everyone except Danielle. She's kind of getting on my nerves. <gasps> She's getting on my nerves a little bit. <laughs> it's like it's 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 giving Barkin Chihuahua like relax. Uh -oh. Relax. <sighs> Those are fighting words. <laughs> I like Rachel, but I think also like she should have just um sorry. Not what you say, it's how you say it. True. Well, you know, I'm no one to talk, but Rachel could have worded everything differently the way she delivered it to Margaret. And yes. she could have handled it with Danielle a little bit better as well. And kind of been like, Girl, come on, you know, you know I was gonna pass the information on. Like we're on a TV show. Like, what do you expect? Or also yeah. she didn't say it in a malicious way. Like sometimes like uh people are so sensitive, and I'm not saying Danielle's sensitive in this way, but like they're so she sensitive, is, and it's like you're being defensive. No one was like, like your mind is telling you people are talking about you. But in reality, it was this came up in conversation. Chill. Danielle is great. And she started off really strong. We love Nate. Um, but I think one thing that we mentioned a bit ago is that she um, is kind of putting herself in a really challenging position because now it's either I don't want to be around because I'm going to put hands on somebody, which we know that you will not continue on with the show if that happens or B everyone could get under your skin. So I do think Danielle will come across on the other side. And I think she's going to be a long six to seven to eight season housewife. But I feel like she's definitely getting her like, uh, you know, she's, she's going through it this first season, but I think at the, uh, put it to you like this next season, I think she's going to be uh, a little better at, at doing what she needs to do on camera. I think it's going to be a rough ride for her for a little bit. I think she came in not having her ducks in a row, you know, come in with that, like, broken family, so to speak, like, and she let it out of the bag immediately. Like, it's going to be a ride. All of mm. that has to play out before she's going to be, like, super-duper happy and amazing if she has that kind of longevity. But I do like all the newbies. I do like them. It's it's all very New Jersey. It's all on brand. So I'm here for it. You know what I mean? Jackie's annoying. <gasps> 
I don't know that I would call Jackie annoying. (laughs) Can I tell you one thing? Can I tell you one thing I don't like about people knocking Jackie? I don't like people knocking them when they're down. Like she's a part timer, and it's always like the making fun of her because she's a part timer. I wish that people would trying extra hard for that extra credit. I know, but wasn't that just Jackie's personality anyway? She's because very no, stoic. She wasn't very like shh, 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 shh after but everybody. She, but now. she wasn't. We talk about though how Jackie's actually winning, even though she has less, because Jackie is actually the richest oh, housewife winning. out of all of the Jersey housewives. She's been and she, like, yeah, I always she's say so that. understated in her oh. cash flow that I'm like, she well, gets then- to suck Evan's dick every night. She's <laughs> winning. She gets to get pounded by that fucking oh, big, burly, grizzly, gorgeous, fucking <laughs> boring white man. Like Ian, que- question oh. for you then, question for you. I have to know because Nate has been, oh, oh, oh my. I mean, mm. wouldn't you just like to, oh yeah. I mean, I would Okay, Nate or them. Evan, what, or both <laughs> at the same time, Leon. What are you thinking? At the same time. Evan behind me, Nate in front of me. Leon is here. The Eiffel Tower. Oh, oh he's here to party. Wheelbarrow. This is the Real Housewives of New Jersey recap you never thought you needed. <laughs> and if you happen to be watching with your children, you can go ahead and put them back on Peacock to watch Create the Escape where you can find me. <laughs> Creating escape rooms. Oh, Jackie that way is your fucking kids are winning. occupied while we talk about the real house vibes in an uncensored fashion. Mm-hmm. Jackie <laughs> oh is gosh. winning. Good for Jackie. Good for fucking Jackie. But yeah. you know, she doesn't even suck his dick. I'm like, bitch, go suck that dick. <laughs> uh, parental advisory, I guess, I guess we gotta say it. Margaret's well, a little annoying this season I make too. A like, <laughs> let go of the arsenal word. Like she's like, arsenal, like she's just going crazy. I'm like, Margaret. Fucking relax too. Everyone Do you think she's going crazy. I don't think Margaret, all of them. I, all of them been, are on heightened alert. Like the I've not been a huge. I've not been a are. huge Margaret fan from like the very very beginning. But that doesn't mean I didn't like her. Just I wasn't like like enamored like people were. But I thought she's hold held together really well this season. Yeah. <laughs> Give me a little parental advice. <laughs> oh. <laughs> If you like this, my podcast's called Everyone is Terrible, and we get fucking disgustingly dirty. I love it. Well, since we're already going down, since we're already going down that lane, <laughs> I have a new game for you. It is called Sue Slander Throw in the Slammer. <laughs> oh, wow. So out of the oh, Real wow. Housewives Don't of New it. Jersey cast, I need you each to pick one person. That you are, I need you to pick three people. One of them you're going to sue. One of them you're going to slander their name until no one likes them. And the last one you're going to absolutely throw in the slammer and throw away the key never to be returned. Ooh. Hollywood Leon, since you are our primary guest today, or since you're our, our guest of honor, we're going to go ahead and ask you who Love do it. you sue, slander, and throw in the slammer? Oh, man. I don't know. Okay, so I guess I would sue Jackie so I can get some of that money. (laughs) (laughs) He's super rich, so let's do that. I'll sue Jackie. Sorry, Jackie. I do actually like you. Um, And then slander. Uh, I think it's really fun to sometimes argue with Ronnie, so I'm just going to slander Melissa. (laughs) (laughs) But you don't have to like her. I like her. You don't have to like her. Do what you do. I like all of them. That's the thing. It's like I, I just because I'm, you know, being a hater or being petty or calling you terrible doesn't mean I don't like you. It's, it's <laughs> nice tease for your podcast. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Um, but so I would probably slander Melissa because she's it's she's such an easy target. She's such an easy target. And then throw away the key. <sighs> Fuck. Slammer. Just because she's a little extra this season, let's go with. Aiden, Jennifer Aiden. Jennifer Aiden. Aiden. You know what? You know what it is about her? She is in that same category with Candace, with Brandy, people that always end up shooting themselves in the foot. It's like we give you the rope and you hang yourself. Like you always just take it too far. Mm-hmm. Too too much. I, I too can see much. That. Too much. Sorry. Yeah. Agreed. Ronnie Jr., you are up next. Who would you... Wait, 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 wait. Where's my little thing at? (laughs) Who would you sue, slander, and throw in the slammer? 
Um, this is gonna be so t- how could I outdo what Leon said? Oh my goodness. <laughs> um, everyone is terrible podcast. He really brings the heat. <laughs> um, Russell, let me see. Um, so the person I would sue um would be who's the smartest on the cast? Who's anybody? <laughs> Whoever's the smartest. Jackson. Um, smart on Jersey? Oh man. I was going to go with who's the smartest. Let me just throw somebody. So it would be Bill Aiden for no reason other than he's got a beautiful home. So it would be Bill. Um, what's the next one? Slander? Slander. Okay. It would have to be. Just the person tarnish who's, their name. Is, <laughs> I'm putting extras on it. <laughs> um, it would have to be the person that um, is like she, she can't really like. It would have to be Teresa. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to dress it up and make it okay, but it would have to be Teresa. Yeah. And last but not least, who are you throwing in the slammer and throwing away the key to? Okay, well, I'm going to flip it over here because, you know, that's a little much. But I'm going to say, like, slammer, like going to the slammer, like, you know, the, like like the club. Um, and so I would take... First of I, all, I, I, I don't know if these ooh, viewers ooh, know what ooh, that ooh, is, ooh. but in New York, that is a certain <laughs> thing. <laughs> okay, so I'm trying to flip it, and I'm trying to flip it. No, um, I'm taking Joey Gorga with me. I'm trying to flip it. I'm trying to flip it. So if you know, you know. And if you don't know, you don't know. Oh, um, my you, goodness. You, you could guess. You could guess. Oh my God! So me and Ronnie Joey, Jr. me and Joey would be uh, hot and steamy up in that thing. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Ronnie, big horror. <laughs> Ronnie Jr. Thank you for playing Sue Slander. Throw in the slammer. I don't Not know if those me. were the real rules. <laughs> we you will never game. know who I'm going to sue, who I'm going to slander, and who I'm going to throw in the slammer. Oh goodness! Wait, oh, my show. What was that? You're not playing. Andy Andy Cohen filling Andy Andy never plays and watch what happens live. Oh goodness! <laughs> and yet so he has I us. Need, do- I need to be ready so when he calls me in, I could be like, "Oh yeah, I don't play the game either." You're right. You're so right. He has us do Wendy Williams type segments, and he gets to be scot free. Okay, <laughs> I see what's going on here. <laughs> Give, put the disclaimer on the bottom again. I saw this. Advisory. I saw this video on TikTok, and it was talking about this Andy Cohen conspiracy and how he's going to retire uh, very soon, and so he's grooming somebody to be like the next Andy Cohen and the conspiracy theory was it was going to be Craig Conover from Southern charm. I'm like, no, if we have time for an aside, I will tell you who it should TikTok be. Is, so, TikTok is insane. Y'all yeah, don't know shit. I'm like, really? I don't waste my time Craig? There, no. Craig's cocaine ass. Oh. I don't think so. <laughs> no. Ooh. Let's all put somebody Allegedly. up. Do we have a t- Russell? Do we have time to do an aside about that? I could tell Let's you, I it. think would be one guaranteed. My answer is going to be the right answer. Um, um, oh my God, uh, uh, Matt, Matt Rogers. Matt Rogers is the perfect and only person at Matt the Rogers. level to jump in and mix it up the way. Uh, well, there's other people, but Matt Rogers is high on the list. I'll say that. He's great. Okay. He's great. Love Who him. are you choosing? Oh, um, I don't. I don't. I don't think. Wait, not for nothing. I'll step in with the second one. I'll step in oh, with the second one. Here we go. Uh, I'll step in with our guy, our good friend, who's been a bartender. DJ Richie Sky also could jump in at a moment's notice and knock that thing down for sure. Oh, why am I talking that way? No, knock that thing down. You can knock that thing down <laughs> in the slammer. Richie, I don't mean, I don't mean <laughs> knock that thing down. Yeah. I mean host the show. <laughs> He can knock, knock me down, down any day, too. Oh, <laughs> gosh, no. <laughs> you know what? I will say, if someone had to replace Andy Cohen, Michael Rappaport would be the perfect individual to do it because he is a housewife fanatic. He watches every series. He's gone on multiple television shows and talk shows to talk about how much he thinks The Real Housewives is reality gold. And I think if anyone's going to dedicate themselves, and the fact that like he has a comedic background, I think filling in for Andy Cohen would be great because, again, when a host replaced a host, it should not be of the same genre type host mm, because it's true. always going to be compared and contrasted. So if you have someone like Michael Rappaport come in, he's a comedian. Andy Cohen wasn't a comedian. He was an executive producer for ABC for years before he came on as the host for The Real Housewives of New Jersey and then um, watch what happens live. So I feel like Michael Rappaport would take a comedic approach to it and – Again, he is housewife fanatic, so he would be the one that would really be there and be authentic and genuine in his interest of the show. And the, and he would he would be 
the chismoso and the one that just digs up the most dirt on people because he would want it. He he wants to be involved with the gossip. So I think I, I, I think realistically him. it would be him too. Yeah. And we also must add that Russell X Raymond, who is the host on uh, Peacock Streaming, Peacock TV's Create the Escape, he's a design expert and host, um, <laughs> would make a nice option at the uh, shortlist to be a new host of a, you know, a modern version of Watch What Happens Live. We, we feel like Russell could do the job, too. We'll call it Watch What Happens Tonight. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> on, at a 11, slammer. on at 11 on at 11 p.m baby yeah i don't know where i look i don't know where ronnie's going with the slammer but it was your fault you made the title so challenging and i was like Dolores and jennifer who continuously <laughs> slammed each other through the entirety of the season until we got to this point where now they're making good and they called it a truce somebody waved the white flag ronnie tell us what you think about this interaction because i know you just love Jennifer Aiden so much mm, and, you, don't. and as much as you adore Dolores love Dolores don't love Aiden <laughs> um but I do like a moment of like let's just stop all this let's move forward because at the end of the day as much as drama brings good television we need movement and growth and new storylines so I was happy to see it yeah very simple that's uh, that's all I got on that Lynn um I, I thought it was very surface I don't think it's so sorry. Can you guys hear all that? Yeah. <laughs> so sorry. Then Mike is being changed out tonight. Um, anyways, um, I thought it was very surface and kind of easy. Um I and I'm 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 with Dolores too. It's like fighting with the child at that's at this point. Because mm -hmm. I, you know, she's one of those people that can't help it. So um I would have called it truce too, just because I would have been exhausted to fight with her all season. She's a hard person to fight with. Like she goes hard and doesn't stop. So I would be like, okay, you're right. Let's just you're right. You're right. You're and right. And Dolores has already won this season when she kindly and calmly said, Oh gosh, Bill's gotta go home with her every night. Could you blame him for drinking? Like she's already won even when she wasn't really like loud exactly. and not, you know it's uh, not coming at her either like hmm? jennifer's gonna come after her over those comments at the reunion i'm sure yes. so this is a short-lived truce anyway mm -hmm. so i would have called it too just because i know it's gonna blow up later and it's like why fight all season when we can just fight at the end bitch <laughs> look i i honestly i don't think i think they're playing nice but i don't think that Jennifer has a genuine interest in really moving past it. Jennifer Aiden is the type that always is going to carry. She's always going to be packing because she's always going to have something in her pocket to pull out, to throw at you in case you make her feel uncomfortable or in case you put her on the defense. She has something to throw back at you, no matter how weak or strong it is. Well, she loves, she holds a grudge like no, she other. does. She holds a grudge. But the only person she should really be mad at, like, because I, I understand Jennifer, and I'm like, when you're hurt, you hurt back. And hurt people hurt people. So I feel like the one thing she's really hurt about and that, that she'll never get past is Margaret because now it's affected her kids yeah. with what happened. So it's like she is genuinely hurt about that. I don't understand why she's really trying to go there with Dolores. If you're going to go there with someone, go there with Margaret. I get it. We we see uh, we see why you both can't get along, and it's great TV. But I don't understand why she's trying to go so hard on Dolores. You know, I almost question Jennifer's family is from the Middle East, correct? Turkey. Are you sure that Jennifer's family is not from Central and South America? Because she pulls up more dirt than any Hispanic that I know. <laughs> she plays. Sure dirty. She's not one of us because she's she just digging dirty. up dirt, just like. <laughs> Just bringing up things that don't even make sense just to throw it in the conversation. Yeah. Some people um, hit hard when they hit back. So it's like, mm, she's one of them. And I feel like, but here's the thing too, is Jennifer is still young enough to not have lived enough life. So like, when you're going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Margaret, and Grant, do I think Margaret should have brought this up? Or do I think that her daughter, do I think Jennifer's daughter should have discovered that her dad had an affair on her mom on TikTok? Absolutely not. But again, you're in reality TV. If you know there's something in the closet, it's going to come out at some point and you need to address it and get ahead of it before anyone else does because nothing's worse than hearing news from someone else when you could have heard it in the person right in the room next door. So like, you know, but Margaret it also has lived li like this crazy life 
of ups and downs, raising herself from a young age, rebuilding her relationship with her mom. So like she is going to have the ammunition to go rounds with Jennifer, even if she doesn't want to. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, you know, honestly, I think it all goes back to Teresa and Melissa and this ripple is affecting the entire cast. Mm -hmm. And that's why I feel everyone is in this like heightened state where they all are very, very defensive about everything. And they all feel like they need to try extra hard just in case there is this division, I think, because uh, even Jennifer is like putting her marriage on the line now. The way she's talking about Bill, I'm like, girl, you're saying things on TV that mm -hmm. you're not going to be able to come back from. And I don't yes. think that you should throw away your marriage. Like, there's a lot of love there. Like, I know it's not perfect, but like, you have done the work, you've put in the work. Like, do you really want to now? I don't know. She's talking like she wants to get divorced. And I'm like, I don't think that would be a good move for you. So I think she I. needs to relax. All of them need to relax. They're all in this heightened state. I've never seen anything like it. They're, they're, I feel like because of Teresa and Melissa, this is not going to continue another season. They're going to divide it. There's going to be some sort of change. And yep. they're all dying to be on the other side. That's why even Frank's going crazy. I'm telling you, there's like something in the water in New Jersey. Yeah, that and you put in two new cast members too, which show how replaceable any cast member could be. It's it's uh, the recipe for sure. Well, speaking yeah. of high, high insensitivity, we had this coffee talk where this medium came in and she was reading the oracles out of their coffee cups after they each took their shots and the grounds in the cup were dictating what she was reading. Now, when you talk about high insensitivity, the women were bringing up, they brought up the issue towards the end if this medium was um prepped before the women showed up because she was saying uh, she was saying words and identifying things that were oddly specific <laughs> to conversations had in the past and so i there a few of them at the table kind of took offense to it but i i will say i did appreciate danielle's genuine reaction to thinking okay cool like my brother and i are going through a hump and now we could potentially get through it. He misses me as much as I miss him. And I think that was some validation that she needed to feel in order to make this next step of reaching out and uh, bridging that, that relationship that had fall, that had fallen apart. And I, I feel like if anyone had a genuine experience, it was her because she really kind of just dove in and was clinging on to everything this medium was saying, even though she was a bit resistant at first, but I thought it was a a little a little convenient that the medium was using words that have been thrown around in the past about the women when they're talking about each other. Probably like, the most terrible psychic we've ever had on Real Housewives <laughs> in history. Like we had the incredible one in the OC that predicted like that Brooke was lying about cancer. You know, we've had the one in in, in Real Housewives of Atlanta that made everyone go crazy and start fighting. This was, and we had the the psychic in Beverly Hills, like you know, tell Kyle that Mauricio's never gonna emotionally fulfill her. And now this coffee shit, this was awful. And I have heard of it, but I've heard of it with tea down in New Orleans, and I did it, and it was amazing. And I do think you're right. Danielle had the most genuine experience. Everybody else, it was so fake. It was bad. It was it was very fake, but not only it was like. It was convenient that Teresa recommended this person <laughs> to host or like to be the lead of this event. And then Teresa happened to not be there, which I found oddly. She was mm. like, I'm going to give you a script. Okay. And this is what's going <laughs> to, this is what you should say. She said, so my brother's wife, my brother Joe's wife is going to be there. <laughs> and She's on display, and then you have just make Danielle feel a lot better about her situation with her brother so that she doesn't project about me and my brother. And then let's talk about all the other women, but just I want you to use these words so that they think that you're in their minds. Like, That's crazy. Girl, if I could flip a table right now, if I, and I wouldn't ruin my house, I would do it. Because I'm like, okay. Yeah. The, produce, the producer and Teresa, who, who, who would have thought? Oh man, and this is just becoming too much. Don't it, you guys think? it was a fine scene, but I do agree with what Leon's saying that uh, I, you know, well, first of all, it wasn't as good as some of the other ones, as explained a, a second ago here. But, but also, also I don't. Upper East Side. Why didn't you get Teresa Caputo? Thank you. That would have been you're amazing. In the upper East Side of the country. 
Mm. Why was Teresa Caputo in such a small vicinity mm. of land? Because those states are so tiny. It is not like you're not going from San Francisco to San Diego to go get Teresa Caputo. You're but she's a medium. Like, she would have been like, no, no's here. And <laughs> like, yeah, you know what I mean? Because yeah. she talks about like dead people. Scenes. Yes. So it would have been totally different, but it would have been amazing. You're right. It would have been different, but maybe there would have been an, an, a past ancestor on Danielle's side that would have said, look, I I visit your brother and this is what he's saying about you. And now I'm here with you. And this is what you're saying about him. What you both need to do is do this in order to bridge this relationship. Uh, Melissa, I know your father passed away when you were 16 years old, but he's with you you know, X, Y, and Z. And he doesn't like what you're doing. He doesn't like you being on the television show. Um, you know, no no's here, no no's here. Yeah. They also don't like Teresa and Joe fighting, but they also think that you need to take a step back and let them figure it out by themselves. Like that's what we needed to hear, especially uh, because Teresa Teresa Caputo is right there. Like, call her. <laughs> she can stop by Cake Boss to get some some feelings that you can eat, and she can stop by at the house out the table and put out the feelings on the tables. That way, everybody can eat their feeling. Okay. I don't think the lady was terrible, up, terrible, terrible, terrible. Um, but I think, yes, the theatrics of someone like, who did you say, Teresa Caputo? How do you say it, Caputo? Teresa uh, Caputo. You know, being in medium. the Northeast, it could work. I don't know if that mixes brands too much, but it would have been theatrical. It would have been extra. TLC. <laughs> is it TLC? <laughs> it's TLC. It is Bravo. TLC. It would have been like, okay. uh -uh. They're like, probably yeah, enemies. Yeah. Well, they could have so. also gotten um, Tyler Hollywood Medium. Yeah, that's true. That's e. Brought him on. Well, I guess the thing NBC is that he's Universal because he's E. Yeah, E is NB NBC Universal. You're right. Yeah. So it's all, all keep but it do all. Do you think in the that family. those scenes are running running old though? I mean, you know, like I feel like they were good no. the ones that Leon explained. Are you guys still like that generally? You just didn't like this yeah. lady. No, I did not like her. Mm. And, I didn't like her, but thing, I do love a psychic to come on and rally everybody up. And get exactly. Her. And here's why I didn't like her. There was nothing new that she was bringing to the table. It's everything that we've seen through the show thus far, nine episodes in. It was a recap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Matter of fact, she's. I have her right here. Hold on. Let me add her to the chat. <laughs> right? She's like, she was recapping everything that happened. Yeah. She's like, you just fought with Jennifer Iden and said something about her marriage. She's like, you're Oddly coming specific. Me that yeah. you were at the Jersey Shore. Jennifer was like, are you kidding me? Do you really think I would tell her to say endorsements when that's literally what you said? Don't you think that's stupid? <laughs> but see, that's when, like, that's when, Jennifer, you should have played it off and laughed and been like, I know, it's so silly, right? Like, it's literally the exact same word. Like, this is, this is bonkers. Like, but instead... <laughs> She just like starts getting all mad, and it's like it's too much. Mm -hmm. God, this fucking microphone is terrible. Sorry. But if she's that, like, here's the thing too: is like she's that blindsided right now by being an ally of Teresa's. That if Teresa really set this up and really gave this medium fortune teller, future holder a script, her, one of her best friends just set her up to be in this situation to mm. get her riled up. Teresa's yep. like the puppeteer. She is. That's she moving is. everyone around in order to make her feel better. And then which like, is crazy because she's like the best puppet herself. Yeah. Especially when like Louie was giving her that script and she's like, peace. Do you want to make peace? <laughs> it was just like, oh God, <laughs> this is you bad. You want to make peace? <laughs> I know I can't do a good Teresa, but you're really good at it, actually. <laughs> Joe, Jacqueline, why? What Jacqueline? <laughs> oh Hello, haha, ha, funny. Guys, I have to go. Thank you so much for having me, though. Leon, thank Aww. you for joining us. If anybody, if you want to head over to his YouTube channel, let them know your handle. You can follow him at the Everyone is Terrible podcast. Um, yes. Please let them know your handle and where to find you and all your locations of your social medias. Guys, thank you so much for having me. It was so fun. Uh, I love to talk New Jersey. We could do it all day long. That's why yes. I have to like put a hard stop to it. I'm sorry. <laughs> please, um, please, please, please come over and check me out. It's Everyone is Terrible podcast. If you want to watch me, do Spotify. I love Spotify. You can see me on Spotify. Oh, nice. But if you just want to listen to it, it's on Apple. It's on YouTube. Hollywood Leon on everything. Everyone is Terrible pod on IG. I love a good DM. I do nominations for the most terrible of the week. Um, got some good people coming up. Good people that I'm like, really? You're, you're, you said yes. Oh, my <laughs> God. Okay. 
Aww. So um, you do a great you do a great job, and I'm not just saying that because I got to be a guest last week, which was such a thrill. Was but also Leon's consistency, like I always say, what makes Leon different is because he is an actor, but then he's a shady b i t c h. Like it's like <laughs> the best of all worlds. So it's really a different. I say that with love. It's just such a different thing. So you definitely got a good show going. Everyone is terrible. We we can't advocate it, uh, for it enough. So yeah, Thank thanks for joining so, us. Yeah, I just like to go against the grain a little bit so <laughs> not keep it so safe so i don't hopefully it'll work out <laughs> we love that thank thanks you lynn for, thanks for having me guys we'll see you next time bye bye <laughs> oh sorry i moved you and then i added you back <laughs> where did i go i'm gone <laughs> okay well actually this is the perfect let me see where i'm at da -da 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 -da. Uh, turn that off. Okay, now we're next to this one, <laughs> and this is the perfect transition for our next game mm -mm. or dare. Good or dare. Okay, we got an image of Frank and Joey. All right, Ronnie, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna play truth or dare. I'm gonna ask you a question, you're gonna choose, or no, 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 I'm gonna ask you truth or dare, you're gonna choose truth or dare, and then I'm going to ask you something in regards to that. Okay, <laughs> all right. Well, I feel, I feel like truth or dare is a game that we do know, yes. <laughs> I don't know how else to explain it. <laughs> no, you did good, you did good. <laughs> Anyways, truth or dare, here we go, Ronnie Jr., you're in the hot seat. Truth or dare. Truth Wait. or dare? Oh, I, I'm supposed to give it. Oh, oh, I was like, what's the question? Okay, truth or dare? <laughs> um, well, I, uh, well, dare, I guess, because I don't feel like what can we do in dare? We're, we're just we're in these little on display boxes. I don't know where else to go. I dare you to say three nice things about Teresa Judice. Oh, done. Teresa has given career longevity in a tough and difficult field that is reality TV. That's number one. Teresa is a fantastic mother of four daughters, which cannot be easy, especially in the limelight, especially when Juicy Joe, um, you know, did not come back to, to Jersey. And she's just so beautifully happy and, and in love. And we do love to see that. Yeah. Thank you, Ronnie Jr. Cheers to that. <laughs> we knew you had some love in there for Teresa. I showcase to people who think that it has to be like Melissa versus uh, Teresa, it does not have to be. You could like who you like, and you could show support to the other one. It's okay. It's gonna be okay. Um, Team Melissa, baby. <laughs> next, our uh, next, next truth or dare? Truth or dare? Truth or dare? Um, truth. Do you think? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. There's more to the question. Okay. Go ahead. Do you think? Melissa is really a victim in all of this madness between her, Joe, and Teresa. Um, not really, because I don't really feel like she she's going through stuff. But again, I don't think it's anything that she can't handle. I think she's a baddie across the board. I've always said that if the show brings her back, they bring her back. She's happy. If the show doesn't bring her back, might suck a little bit. She's going to end up somewhere else, bigger and better. Melissa is a go-getter. There's no... I mean, I don't want to say there weren't, there's no crying because this is family, but um, for the most part, I don't feel like meek for her. Like I like her. Uh -huh. I like her strength. I like her tenacity. I like her two sisters. I like her mother, Donna Marco. I, I feel like everything's on the good side. There's not as much woe was me, although some stuff has been coming at her, but you know, sometimes you just take the BS and you keep it pushing. And I think that's what she's going to do. Yeah. And Round oh, three, truth gosh, or dare. Gosh, it's getting harder and harder. Okay, truth or dare, round three. Um, what do you want me to say? <laughs> I don't know. What do you want to say? Um, <laughs> let's do another truth. At the, yeah, oh, yeah. that's not what I wanted you to say. Okay, okay I can flip good. it. I can flip no, it. No, we can do truth. We can do truth. Do you think <laughs> Melissa bought her followers? Um, don't really know or care. Social media has been such a cornball thing to me. Um, this is coming from somebody who worked in the radio industry 20 years ago. I care about, you know, having vibrancy, being a compelling person on the television, whether I, I if she did it, it is a little lower in morals, you know, um, but I don't know that she did it. And okay. so I don't take, 
I don't, me personally, I think social media is the corniest thing ever. So I don't, I don't really much care if she did or she didn't. All right, Ronnie Jr. Thank you for playing Truth or Dare. Wait, so what happens to that dare? We have to roll it over next week or something? We got to roll it over to next week. Oh, gosh. I am like. I, I had really, a good one, too. I had a good damn. one. Wait, we like, may have right to do another show. We may have to do like other like one-off shows <laughs> that's not about a recap, but just like the pop culture extravaganza or something, because this is good. And we had Hollywood. Leon, like, all right now. All right. We're doing okay. I will say I did, out of the two games that we did play today, I did like Sue Slander throwing the slammer the best. I can't believe you. <laughs> I can't believe you did that game, and then you made us answer, and then I flipped it. I flipped it. I said, okay, slammer, like as in slammer the club. And not everyone knows where that's at, but if you're in the L.A. area, you you know, the girls Don't know. Don't look it up. And so I said, I'll take Joey over there. Me and Joey will go over We will go over there. <laughs> you know, I actually just, I just found out what the slammer is. I okay, we're not going to have we're, found this out. I don't think we're going to have it aside York, like two uh, weeks ago. Oh, really? I really? had no, I had no idea. Anyway, okay. Anybody who hasn't. Well, it's probably a mouthful. Uh, <laughs> the girls are talking. No, <laughs> let's just uh, let's just stay. <laughs> let's stay on Jersey. Well, actually, that was kind of the end of our little Jersey recap today because it was a re- it was a really a, a simple show. There was a, a lot that happened in a little bit amount of time. Mm-hmm. I think the only other thing I want to address is that I think Joe and Melissa's house is gorgeous. I think it's hilarious that uh, Antonia has a bigger shower than Melissa, but mm. like Joe said, she's my daughter. And I will say there is some weight to be said with that. The way that a man treats his daughter is the way that his daughter should e- expect a man to treat her. Oh, so I like that. So if you show your daughter love, respect, and sacrifice in order to give you these great things, I think also she'll go find a man or or woman that will give her that will show her love, respect, and then you know work the work to give her things that are worth time and worth waiting for because the house takes so long and symbolizes you know those. Things that are great are are worth waiting for. Mm-hmm. I kind of take it as a symbolism, which I, li- I, I, I love a good symbolism. I like that. And, you know, there are here's the thing about when you live big and large and vibrant and all these things, you do run the risk of having people judge you for some of the things that aren't the greatest. You know, some things don't land as good as you intend. But for the most part, even what you're saying here right now. They're fun. The Gorgas are a lot of fun. And there are there is levels of like integrity and principles and morals and all of these things that I just wish more people would see. Again, I am not in the business to argue other sides of it, but I just feel like um, you could only use your use your voice and lend your voice to the things that you do care and like. And to me, they they seem good. And when, when you're making uh, Russell, when you're making that commentary that like you love to see Joe showcasing and being. A, a really great role model to his daughter, yeah. to his daughter, to his, his daughter, to his, to his daughter. It, it, it shows like we can't let these characters that we don't know, you know, you, people don't know these characters. They are on the television show, but we don't know them. And there's, you know, even Jennifer Aiden is somebody who I don't necessarily enjoy on the show. Mm-hmm. There's probably 10 trillion redeeming qualities about her. So I can't necessarily say, hey, you know, not that I care what anyone thinks, but hey, to those who think the Gorgas are whatever they think they are um they're they're awesome they're (laughs) they're cool you know i listen to on display the podcast every week or i hadn't always but i do now and it's such it's it's tons of fun you know um we just got to judge based on what we see on the television and as i keep saying lately um being on reality tv is very difficult so i salute and give flowers to everybody yeah and uh... (laughs) No, no, no. Like you're saying, living large is like one thing, and 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 there's so much scrutiny that comes with it. I mean, there people are gonna nitpick about everything that you do. And mm-hmm. again, I I think there is a lesson to be learned that we're. I'm gonna get into my feelings for a second. Uh-huh. I was in high school, and there was this teacher. Did not like me. Did not think I was smart enough to be an AP. Did not think I was worthy enough to be an AP. He asked the question. He said, do you think individuals are products of their, of their environment? I said, absolutely. He said, no, they're not. I said, absolutely. Because whether you choose to want to be better or you choose that you want to go down that same alley, you're still a product of your environment. Because 
this environment because of what you lived in produced you to push forward to become better or this mm -hmm. environment also produced you to live exactly how everyone in that environment is living or this environment also caused you to spiral because it was a bad environment and now you're worse off mm -hmm. so yes i do believe you are a product of your, of your environment with that being said when i saw joe talking about this is his daughter i was like hopefully antonia will see that as I want my spouse to do these things for me and I'm willing to go just as hard for them because whether we like it or not, we end up bringing someone home with us. That is some symbolization of our parents, right? Because that's how we learn. That's how we were loved and that's how we've learned to love. So therefore we look for those qualities. I'd love, to, I'd love to know if that's a thousand percent true though. And I'm not pushing back against you. But I'm just equating it in my head. Like my family's so good structurally in terms of I love them, but in terms mm -hmm. of like who they are and who I am, it's, it's I'm always like, are, are we really related? So I, <laughs> I I don't really feel like I run in terms of who I'm, you know, <laughs> feeling. Like I don't really feel like I look towards that same quality, but maybe there's something I don't really know. You know what I mean? Maybe there's something that I'm not connecting. So I appreciate the conversation. I think I think it's a valuable conversation. I think indirectly and unconsciously we attract those things mm. because those are what's comfortable to us. Okay. And then of course, then you have you and I who are in our situations of you have your chosen family because you kind of have to go through this road of, of, and this is for a whole nother conversation, a whole nother podcast, but you, you go through this transition of going down this road of loneliness because you're not re receiving the support that you want to receive. And so mm -hmm. long story short, all I'm saying is that, um, Antonia is being supported and guided and being respected as a young woman and being shown that, um, that there is, that there's more to life and that people can love you like this and that's okay. You know, like the old saying goes, I take my daughter on, I take my daughter on vacations to, to New York so that she doesn't find a dingy weekend in Vegas with you acceptable. <laughs> oh, right, right. That's interesting. Uh, yes, yes, yeah. Um, and we, you and I re relate to it in a way. We're we're not fathers, but like you know, we have sisters, and yeah, you know, my sister's ten years younger, so it was never anything I had to worry about early on. But as I would get older, but as she would mature, I'd feel more comfortable. But yes, there is absolutely a concept of like you know who's coming into their orbit and what what are they bringing to the table? What where is their baggage? Mm -hmm. Some baggage is necessary, especially after we're all you know, over 30 years old, there's always going to be a little something, but um, I think, you know, people can, not, and, huh? I said, I'm perfect. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, okay. That's a, another topic for another episode. Uh, we, we, we love an arrogant king for sure. Um, and I'm arrogant too. So it is what it is. I was being very humble and warm and vulnerable and soft today. I don't know why. I just been feeling like very grateful for a lot of things. Yes. And, I mean, you've never really heard me not say, Teresa's this, blah, 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 blah. And like, Melissa's icon. I'm like, I'm just kind of like, do what you want. Like, like who you like. Like, this con this idea to con convince somebody else is just so crazy to me. I don't love Teresa on the TV. The table nudge wasn't that interesting season one to me. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was for other people. It was for the network. And again, she's lived, Teresa's lived her life in the, in the public eye. Let that be. You know, uh, I'm sure next week I'll be you know, shady again, but this week I felt very warm and very like, I just want goodness for all of these cast members and their families. And it, it can't be easy. You know, it just, this, this is the reason they're making those paychecks are for a reason. Absolutely. And to be fair, um, I mean, it has been raining the past few weeks and like, I noticed that you were on the beach yesterday. So you went for a stroll in the mm -hmm. sunlight. So sunlight can also give you this energy that like we haven't had in weeks because of the rain. But do you know I was outside in the cold, cold beach, which I, I, I love a cold beach. Oh, should I sell it the other way? People's okay, I, yes. Russell, hold. On, I got you. You're glowing. You're glowing. Run it back. Run it back. <laughs> I was on the beach, shirtless and everything, and they were all looking. Oh yes, oh yes. <laughs> I, the, the, the waves were flowing. My hair was glowing. Yeah, it was nice. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That, but I mean, it happened something like that. <laughs> I like know. I honestly, I wish I could have dimmed the lights. So I could just like bring down the mood. Like, dun, dun, dun. 
we will get to that level of production. <laughs> I can ask you a, a solid outro question. Yes. We did make the commentary, and it's not, I don't think we ever need to think of things as like replacing somebody, but the commentary came up earlier in our, earlier in our episode whether who would be the perfect replacement for Andy Cohen. And then we were throwing all these names around and giving theories as to who you would bring up. But let's not even talk about his show. Let's talk about Russell in the work that you've done, Peacock Streamings, Create the Escape as a host. Of course, you have your YouTube channel here and have been a journalist um, in terms of all kinds of places, including uh, TMZ, this, this, and this. Mm -hmm. What would it mean to you to have a show that's in proximity to a Watch What Happens Live? Something new, something that is pop culture driven, brings out your humor, your warm side. What would that mean to you? Honestly, yeah. It would symbolize so much for given the sacrifices that I've made, the friendships that I've that have drifted away because I've honed in so much on my craft. Um, I would kind of be beside myself, just like I was when I landed Create the Escape. I think at the time, the representation in the Hispanic community uh, was right about a 4.6% representation throughout all media platforms. And I think I had it was something like a one in and a couple million chance of landing this role with the odds and the percentages, the way that they were skewed at the time. And so I was so grateful. Like I didn't even know how to explain it. I didn't know how to accept that moment. So I think if, if I was to have something so big as such, it would mean the world to me because I would be able to keep paving the way for other young Hispanic people who are trying to push themselves to be in the industry. And it would really open the floodgates for me to, be this safe haven for them and understand their culture and understand, you know, the, the struggles that our specific culture, you and I, our specific culture face when it comes to television and media. So I can, you know, with my own production company, be able to afford these opportunities and, and, you know, create this diverse, this diverse television series that we, that we all kind of seek to have. And so I think if I was to land something as major as that, I would just, I would honestly show up so grateful and happy every day to work. And I would be looking for like the people who I can see and the passions It would afford me the opportunity to be able to give out scholarships to people who would never be able to put themselves through college. Because in reality, I'm a simple human being who doesn't need much. I don't need a 15, $20 million mansion. Would it be nice? Yes. Would I be able to house people and, and maybe foster kids and, and, you know, underprivileged youth and stuff like that and take them in? as a father, like, absolutely. Um, but again, like anytime uh, opportunities afforded to me, like I always try to get back, even with my job now, like I make a good amount of money. And so if I see someone, especially there's this man on the street who I see in our neighborhood, I'll buy him lunch every now and then when I see him, because it's like, I am blessed enough to be able to afford these things. And like, you're going through hard times. So I don't need a billion dollars in the bank. I got a little extra money. I got a little bonus. I'm gonna go ahead and buy you some lunch. Um, so something like that, back to your question, if I was able to land something as big as this, it wouldn't only be me landing this, it would be us landing this because I would be able to afford opportunities for everyone who's helped uplift me and also open new opportunities in my own creations for those who are out there seeking it. We all have to remember that our dreams are not only built within ourselves, but that they're built with other people dependent on us. So I have the drive, the motivation, the push, and the, the work ethic to push forward. Someone else might not, but they might have a great work ethic of writing articles. And that has to do with my dream as long as I can make it happen. Well, <laughs> I must say at my much more mature age than you, because I am older, it would be all about me. It would be about that fat condo. It would be about dating all the right ones. Mm -hmm. It would be like fancy dinners. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Philanthropy, shamalanthropy. No, I'm so silly. We got to go. We really got to go. But it's funny. I asked you the question and you were like in the, the perfect, like, I want to give back to everyone. I'm like, no, I want it for me. I am stingy today. <laughs> no, I, I, I'm not stingy. But yes, um, I'll say it and I'll say it always every single episode. This is about everyone um, creating their own. You know what I mean? Like yeah. there could be 
10 trillion Real Housewives of New Jersey recaps. We have fun doing it. We appreciate it. We hope you could like, comment, and subscribe. But at the same time, watch the other one. Watch Hollywood Lee and watch all of our friends' stuff. Like yeah. I, w- I do want everyone to win because my journey has been about 20 years, and it's like I need to get that check to start rolling in a little heavier than it is. But I also want to have fun, and I want to see everybody kind of rock out together. I've learned Russell, that I say the word rock out so much. It is so cheesy. That's I must be good. I must be punished. <laughs> it's rock all good. Out? That's, that's your motto. Rock, rock out. out. Who says that? Hey, rock. let's rock out. What? Oh. Rock out on the slammer. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We're going to keep it PG. Um, <laughs> we did not mention the slammer in this episode. No, we did not. If you thought you heard it, you heard wrong. Um, thank you for welcoming me once again. This was a great time as usual. Yeah, I really always, always, always. And everybody, they can you can find Ronnie Jr. Do I have your little slide up here? No, I don't. But <laughs> it was in the very beginning. You can scroll all the way to the beginning. You can scan it with your smartphone. You can It'll give you all of Ronnie's social handles. You can find him here every week with me covering the Royal Housewives of New Jersey. You can also find him on Difficult Podcasters and the Randomly Podcast, mm-hmm. covering pop culture, hot topics, uh, housewives, um, talking about his future man. Uh, uh, talking about um, where I'm going to get my Ozempic at. Uh, this is just, a, it's a, you know, there is a, the reason it's called Randomly is for a reason. So, yes, yes, follow. And you can also find him uh, on Jonesy in the Morning on 94.7. Oh, yes. Yeah, support my queen, queen of queens. She's been in the business for a very long time. She is releasing new music soon. Um, she hasn't released new music in like over 25 years. Yes. Not only not only was she a stellar radio personality, and that's New York City at that. So we're looking at New Jersey housewives like, you know, the you know, the tri-state area, you know, the the the, the airwaves. We are talking. You know what? Maybe one of these days I'll do a little commentary on who I like on Real Housewives of New Jersey or something on the yes. show. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. To you, Melissa, baby. <laughs> and until then, you can find me all over the internet at Russell X Raymond. You can subscribe to my YouTube channel if you like us. Please uh, leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. Also, let us know who you would sue, slander, and throw in the slander. Oh, my God. When it comes to the Real Housewives of New Jersey. And if you're lucky, we'll bring it up. Tweet me, at me. But just don't text me because that's a little weird. Until then, we'll see you next week.